If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Even more, what would it allow you to do, accomplish, change? I remember sitting across the table from my high school psychologist. I remember he was wearing a blue blazer. And I remember thinking how oddly wide his table, his desk was. But to be honest, I can't tell you exactly what he said. I just remember thinking, I don't believe him. I wasn't going to believe that I wasn't able to do something just like anyone else, as he was trying to tell me. My D in French may have said otherwise. I don't think the way others do. I don't learn the way others do. But to me, that's my advantage. That's my strength. That's what makes me, me. So I told myself, this is not a disability. It's my superpower. There was a pivotal moment in my memory when my mother, who was trying to run a small business from our house, graciously, and very graciously, <laughs> asked me to stop taking phone messages for her and to let the answering machine get it. For those who may not be familiar, the answering machine is a now antiquated system that predated voicemails. <laughs> I looked at the numbers and the letters that I was writing, and most of them were incorrect making it impossible for her to return phone calls. Not a great way to run a business. It was in that moment where I realized for myself, I am dyslexic. Now, my superpower had a name. To be very clear, it's not an empowering experience to be told that you have a disability. Someone is telling you that you don't have the ability to do something by comparing your capabilities to that of another human. It was so much so that I didn't want to openly admit this to my teachers or professionals who I was trying to impress. And as a result, I never utilized any of the opportunities that may have been available to me. Instead, I came up with my own ways to help overcome these challenges. Of everything that I tried, sign language actually helped me more than any other way. I was able to take letters, combine those into words, which then I could process and create an information or a visual that would help me process what was trying to be communicated to me. And even to this day, if my six-year-old spells words to me from across the room, I rely on spelling it out to help tell her what word she's trying to read. After coming up with ways throughout my entire life to try to overcome these challenges, I was drawn to become an educator, where I could teach students of all different learning styles what I'm most passionate about. Design. As a visual thinker, and learner, it was within design that I found the perfect place to create visuals to help communicate a message effectively, something I had already been doing my entire life. And it was within design that I found that sweet spot where my dyslexia became my strength. The first augmented reality experience that I can remember is when I was watching a broadcast of a football game on TV. And though I should have been paying attention to the players on the field, I was actually drawn to the sidelines, where the chain crew who was managing the signal poles were. And I wanted to figure out how those poles were projecting the lines that I could see across the width of the field. It uses a combination of green screen technology and motion tracking to add a layer of information into our view. And that's what augmented reality is in its simplest form. It's the addition of a layer of information into our existing view.
It doesn't have to be complicated, and it doesn't have to be high tech for it to be effective. And chances are, you've already been experiencing it. If you've seen a broadcast of a football game on TV, then you know how the addition of these lines can help enhance the experience for you watching the game. These lines have been used since 1998. So augmented reality is not new. In fact, there are examples that date back as early as the uh, early 1900s, where the targeted viewfinder was used on top of a rifle to help improve the accuracy of a shot for a hunter. So augmented reality is not new, but people are just starting to really see the potential or the power of this technology. What I love about AR is how it has this opportunity to solve problems in our everyday life. It's already changing the way we learn, the way we access information, and in the way we wayfind through our daily life. This addition of type and image into our existing contextual view is a really powerful way to enhance our everyday life and make these daily tasks just a little bit easier. Have you ever been in that situation at a social event where you see someone from across the room? They start to approach you. You've met once before and you had a full in-depth conversation about their dog. If you're a cat person, then we can say cat, that's fine. And you remember all the details of that conversation. You remember that they were holding a hot cup of coffee. But for the life of you, you cannot remember their name. And you realize that you're going to have to introduce them to the person standing next to you. They get closer, you panic. The name Waffles pops into your mind, and you're like, nope, that was the cat. <laughs> they get closer again, and yet, and the time happens, and you fumble, and to make matters worse, you can no longer even remember the name of the person standing next to you. <laughs> Enter the power of augmented reality. Tag AR is a mobile application that displays your typical hello, my name is name tag, augmented. It takes names and it puts it exactly where we need it, in our view, right above our heads. It uses a combination of facial recognition and location services to display name tags of those around you who are also using the app. It's intended to be used at networking events, meetings, conferences, workshops, anywhere where you would traditionally be wearing a name tag. The concept came as a passion project of mine. And after the concept was born, I moved into the design phase, my favorite part. And the night that AR Kit was released to Apple developers, I, spent up, I, I st stayed up almost all night researching. And it was in that moment that I decided I was going to learn all the programming I needed to start developing the app. 18 months later, it was released to the App Store. Right now, it's reliant on holding up your mobile device and scanning the room to see the tags around you. But the true vision for this app is that it will be uh, able to be worn in a wearable device, AR glasses. So it kind of gets rid of that awkward social awkwardness that before someone comes up to you, you have to hold up your phone before saying hello. With it in your view, you can see the person coming, their name tag right above their head, and you can say, hello, Amy. It's great to see you again. Never forget a name again with Tag AR. Some people may even think you have superpowers. I told you that this project came out of a passion project of mine. And the initial intent and the ideation was actually for this app to help those who are dyslexic. One of the biggest problems is with having this cognitive disorder is the transition and trans, like, uh, communicating between visual and auditory processing. So 
So if someone comes up and says, hello, my name is Renee Stevens, you're not limited to that verbal introduction. You now have a visual to support it. Additionally, in version 2.0, there are user profiles. And with a tap of a button, you can hear the correct pronunciation of someone's name before you go up to them and have to say it. Though dyslexia and was it what inspired this application, I always intended to have a much wider audience. We all forget names. And it was very important to me to have this be an app where those with a specific learning disability could access this information without having to publicly display that they had a need for it. So if you could have any superpower, what would it be? To answer, you may need a better understanding of what a superpower actually is. Super means extraordinary, exaggerated, or the Latin definition, above. Some may even say, augmented. What is power, really? From a physics perspective, it's how fast energy can be changed into work. Or another way of saying it, how fast technology can process dynamic information, processing power. So it's safe to say augmented reality is a superpower. And you all have it in the palm of your hand or wherever your mobile device currently is. It's an extraordinary technology that is already changing the way that we have information given to us in context, in real time. You can go to the store, pick up a product, have it scan it, and instantly receive customer reviews, price comparisons, even watch a how-to video or a trailer before purchasing the product. You can now Go and you can design your entire living room in augmented reality without purchasing any furniture. If you are a student sitting in a classroom, you can experience in glasses closed captioning services in the language of your choice. The next project I'm working on. The future of augmented reality is in wearable technology glasses or a way that we can actually have this information layered into our view in our sight. What makes me so excited about that is it's going to empower us to look up and re-engage with our world and environment around us. You don't have to be a superhero to have superpowers. And the way I see it, never forgetting someone's name again is mine. What's yours? Thank you.